Einstein's theory of special relativity was first written down over a hundred years ago. Among other things, it describes what happens when two people are moving with respect to one another and how they experience space and time. While the theory has been verified countless times over the intervening decades, much of it remains difficult for some people to accept. It predicts some pretty weird things, things that are just outside our normal experience. Perhaps the prediction that is most counterintuitive is the idea that two people can experience time differently. Now, I don't mean that in the way that a small child waiting for Santa Claus to come complains about how long it takes, nor how someone dreading a dentist appointment finds that time disappears in the blink of an eye. No, I'm talking about the very strange claim that if you take two identical people wearing two identical and perfect wristwatches and arrange them to be moving with respect to one another, they will find that they disagree on how fast time is moving. Now, that just sounds really hard to believe, and it's definitely counter to our experience, but this isn't a theoretical idea. It's something that particle physics experimenters encounter all the time. So I thought it might be helpful to describe to you one such measurement using one of Fermilab's neutrino beams. You're going to have to trust me on the numbers I use, but the basic idea is incredibly easy to understand. So here's how it goes. To make a beam of neutrinos, we start with a beam of charged pi mesons, which we also call pions. Pions are nice because they decay essentially 100% of the time into a muon and a neutrino. It's also nice because pions are the most commonly made particle when you slam a particle beam into a target. This makes it possible to make tons of pions and consequently tons of neutrinos. The lifetime of a pion is easy to measure. Suppose we make a bunch of pions that are stationary. We find that they live a characteristic amount of time before they decay. They live 28 billionths of a second. Some live longer and some live shorter, but on average, that's how long they live. Now, we don't intentionally make stationary pions very often. It turns out that they just aren't all that useful. Instead, we make them with lots of energy and they're going very fast. We can measure their speed by just measuring how long it takes them to travel some known distance. Take the distance and divide by the time and you get the velocity. At high energy, the pions move at almost the speed of light, which is about 300 million meters per second, or for us Americans, 186,000 miles per second. If we know the pions' lifetime and how fast they're moving, it's easy to figure out how far they move before they decay. Just as a car moving 60 miles per hour for three hours will move 180 miles, we multiply the time and the velocity to figure out how far they go. So when we multiply the velocity of 300 million meters per second by a duration of 28 billionths of a second, we get 8.4 meters, or about 27 feet. So if we had a beam of pions and we wanted to let them decay into neutrinos and muons, we'd have to give them at least 27 feet of distance to let the average pion decay. If we wanted to leave long enough for the laggards to decay, we need to give them a longer distance. Call it 60 feet, which is the distance from pitcher's mound to home plate in American baseball. If that's all there was to it, we'd be done. But you know that there's more to it than that, or I wouldn't be making this video. And that is the effect due to relativity. You see, what I've told you is the time it takes for pions decay according to their own watch. We experience time differently. For us, time passes more quickly. So just how much more quickly does time pass for us? Well, the answer to that is actually kind of tricky. It depends on the energy of the pion, which is something accelerator scientists can change at will. However, for the specific pion beam line that we use at Fermilab to make a neutrino beam that we send to northern Minnesota, a realistic beam energy is 10 billion electron volts of energy. I'll show you how we determine the difference in the rate at which the pions and our clocks tick, but I must caution you. Doing this right means that you need to know your relativity. I get lots and lots of emails from people who misuse relativity. So before you generalize, remember, I'm a paid professional. Don't try this at home. Or, if you choose to do so, be sure to do it correctly. It turns out that you can determine the difference in the rates of two clocks by dividing the energy of the beam of pions, which we recall is 10 billion electron volts, by the mass of the pion, which is 0.14 billion electron volts. Do that division and you get 71.4. So that means while the lifetime that the pion experiences, which is 28 billionths of a second, is much longer for us, specifically 71.4 times 28 billionths of a second, or 2 millionths of a second. 
And since the speed of a pion with that velocity is near the speed of light, it means that as far as we're concerned, the pion will travel 600 meters or 1,920 feet. That's over a quarter mile, 36% of a mile to be exact. The reason is simple. Our clocks tick more quickly than the pion's clock. So this might be confusing, so let's recap. We can measure the lifetime of a stationary pion, and it's about 28 billionths of a second. A particle with that lifetime, traveling at the speed of light, will travel about 30 feet, which is about from here to here. However, the rules of physics are a little bit different for a pion traveling at high speed. A pion with an energy of 100 billion electron volts doesn't travel 30 feet, not by a long shot. It travels more like a quarter mile, which is like from here to here. So no matter how much Einstein's theory of special relativity bothers you, the data is inarguable. Moving clocks tick more slowly than stationary ones. We demonstrate this every two seconds with every blast of neutrino sent from Fermilab to distant detectors. There is simply no argument against this irrefutable data. While the predictions of Einstein's theory are broader than this single observation, it's the simplest way to confirm his theory. The other predictions have also been confirmed, but we'll leave those stories for another time. However, the bottom line is that our intuition that all clocks tick at the same rate is simply wrong, and Einstein retains his place among the pantheon of physics superstars. Mm -hmm.